Hey guys, I'm Anil here, and before I jump into the video, I just want to ask you guys to give me the HBO special, and that is the Help a Brother Out. And you can do that by hitting the subscribe button and leaving a like on this video. It helps out a lot on the algorithm. I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to do that. All right, now that that's over, guys, the league is not ready for what's about to happen next year, specifically what Luka Doncic is about to unleash next year. I'm here today to call it out. I'm here to tell you that Luka Doncic is going to win his first MVP next year, and he's about to tear up the entire league. A recent poll conducted from NBA executives found that most executives believe Luka Doncic is the top player under 25. Luka beat out his counterparts, counterparts may I add, that are very formidable. So guys like John Morant, John Morant has been the new love child of the NBA media. Trey Young, Trey Young, all of New York hates Trey Young. Zion Williamson, Zion Williamson was touted to be the next LeBron. So Luka Doncic is a very formidable guy. Luka Doncic is a very talented guy. We all know that, right? And this poll just exemplified that. But I'm here to tell you there's more coming. In fact, I think the league is going to be in shambles next year from what Luka is about to do. And I think this because for the first time in like the last three seasons, Luka Doncic has kept his body healthy and ready. And he will show up to training camp healthy and ready to go. Because this summer, Luka kept busy by playing basketball out in Europe. For all of you Americans who didn't know, the FIBA Eurobasket 2022 championships happened this summer. It happened last month. And like his European counterparts, Luka went back to Europe to play intense international basketball for a month and a half. Giannis went back and he played for Greece. Nikola Jokic went back and played for his home country. Rudy Gobert went back and played for France. And speaking of France, actually, France was in the finals against Spain, but Spain did manage to edge out France and win it all, which is a testament uh, to European basketball. I wanna say congratulations to them. It's well-deserved and it is a sign of the game of basketball growing in the world. Why? Because there was a time where only the United States would just dominate. Now you have teams like Australia, you have teams like Spain, you have teams like France. Canada's really good too. So the game of basketball is growing internationally and you're seeing that by how many European stars there are in the entire NBA. Like for example, the three, the three best players arguably, you could argue Giannis Antetokounmpo, Nikola Jokic, and Luka Doncic are the three top players in the NBA. And you wouldn't be looked at crazy. You could be wrong, but it's an arguable point, right? And that goes to show you how great European basketball is. They're sending over great talent over here. And I just wanted to congratulate Spain for winning it all, but I digress. And the reason I find it important that Luka went back to play international level basketball is because Luka hasn't always had the work ethic to stay in shape. In fact, if you remember last year, Luka came into training camp heavy. He put on a few LBs. <laughs> and and I, if you remember, I remember there were memes last year and the memes had me rolling. I was laughing my butt off. But that's not happening this year because Luca played international basketball for a month and a half. And school best player under 25. Luka Doncic is a top five player in the entire NBA right now. And he's under 25. And there are only like two guys who can say that when they were under 25, they were the top five players in the league. Kevin Durant, LeBron James, even Stephen Curry wasn't at that level yet. Luke is really, really, really good. Like extremely good. And for context, last year, Luca came in out of shape and he still managed to cook the entire league. That's funny, right? Because imagine what he's going to be able to do now that he didn't skip a beat, now that he didn't let himself go. Because in my opinion, it's one thing to stay in shape in the off season by training with your trainer, doing scrimmages and hitting the weight room. It's a completely different thing to actually play game intensity, international level type of basketball for a month and a half. One is gonna keep you keen, keep you on your P's and Q's, keep you ready to go. One is going to keep you in shape, but it's gonna take some time for you to get mid-season performance. So what I'm saying is basically, Luca hasn't really skipped a beat after what he did in the playoffs last year. And by that, I mean he torched the Phoenix Suns. Just go ask Devin Booker about that because 
The Phoenix Suns had no answer for this brother. He completely carved up the Phoenix Suns. He just had his way with them. And I'm pretty sure they still have nightmares about him. You have to remember, the Phoenix Suns went through the finals the year prior. So they were really good teams and he just completely had his way with them. So this brother is special, bro. But basically after that performance in the playoffs, when he lost to the Golden State Warriors, which is understandable, reasonable, the Golden State Warriors did win a championship this year. They were the best team in the entire league for the whole season. I predicted that they were gonna go to the finals at the very beginning of last year, and they did. So it's understandable that Luka lost to them, but after he lost to them in the playoffs, what he do? He took some time off, a month off, let his body cool down for a bit, and he got right back in the nick of things. And he's playing international basketball. And I suspect Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, they're going to be in tip-top shape as well. They're going to tear up the league next year. Like these European guys, these European players that were playing international basketball, they have an advantage over their you know, American counterparts because listen, our American counterparts were doing what? Out on the beach somewhere, taking you know time off, uh, having their, an off season out in Cancun, doing whatever. These guys were playing international level basketball for a month and a half. That gives you an advantage, that gives you a slight edge. And Giannis Antetokounmpo was already already in his bag last year. He was he was the best player in the league last year to me, in my opinion. So these European guys, they're ready to go. And if you don't believe me that playing games is actually more beneficial than, you know, just working out with your trade and just scrimmaging with like five other NBA players, ask yourself, why did LeBron play Pro-Am games this year? Why did LeBron play Pro-Am games this year for the first time in like 11 years? Because the last time LeBron played Pro-Am games was in 2011. And the reason why is because Think about it, LeBron didn't make the playoffs this year. He would have had from April to October of not playing high level basketball, right? That's almost six months of not playing high level basketball. You need to stay in shape. You also need to stay in, in game shape. You also need to feel that in-game intensity. And that's why LeBron opted to do two Pro-Am games, right? So he played one at the Drew League and then he played Jamal Crawford's Pro-Am game. And so that's why he did it because he was completely out of shape. He was just out of the loop for a long time and he just needed to feel in-game intensity. And because it helps you out, I think, I think in my opinion, it helps you out more than, you know, other methods of staying in shape and training in the summer. And that's exactly what Luka Doncic did. And what I'm predicting is next year, Luka Doncic will win his first MVP. He has been projected to win MVP in last seasons, but he hasn't. And I think this year will be his breakout MVP season. The only hindrance I can see happening to him is the Dallas Mavericks not surrounding him with enough talent because the Dallas Mavericks have a generational talent in this guy, Luka Doncic, and they're not giving him the tools that he needs to actually get over the hump. Like for example, this year, this off season, the Dallas Mavericks, like the Lakers, did nothing in the off season to improve their team. Nothing. And last year, Luka basically carried the Mavericks. He carried the Mavericks, right? Jalen Brunson was traded away from the Dallas Mavericks. So the, the second best guy is not there anymore and the Mavericks did absolutely nothing. So that's the only hindrance that I can see stopping Luka Doncic or his team. But one-on-one, -on -one, I pray for the poor soul that's going to be guarding Luka Doncic next year. Because Luka Doncic to me is on LeBron's level. Luka Doncic right now is better than what LeBron was at this age. The numbers speak for themselves. Whoever's guarding Luka next year, rest in peace and it kind of bugs me that the Dallas Mavericks aren't doing enough to surround this generational talent with the tools that he needs to succeed I always hate when I see that from teams I always hate that right you're just wasting away prime years uh, and even though Luka Doncic isn't 26 because 26 is around where NBA players hit their prime I think Luka Doncic hit his prime earlier why because he's been playing professional basketball since he was 16 He's just so so much better than his counterparts. Like it's actually crazy. And so I think his prime is gonna be a little bit longer than his counterparts. And I think he's gonna hit his apex prime at like 28. But yeah, those are just my thoughts, guys. Be on our lookout for Luka Doncic next year. He's about to tear up the league. But if you like this kind of content, again, make sure to give me the HBO special. Help a brother out by hitting the subscribe button and like this video, like this video. That's the biggest metric YouTube uses to push this video forward. Thank you guys for tuning in and until next time, kids.